Hello, now we will see the most important, one of the most important algorithms in public key cryptography. Yes, the RSA algorithm. Three people joined together and worked on the, an algorithm and that has become a viral in the market, in the security market. Yes, that algorithm is RSA algorithm. So Ron Ravers, Shamir and Adelman algorithm is a well-known public key cryptography and even in today's world, if you see many websites, many security places are using this RSA algorithm. So this is a public key cryptography where for encryption it uses public key, for decryption it uses the private key. Now it's widely used. Now we'll see how this algorithm actually works. Now this is actually depending on two prime numbers, say P and Q. See for calculation purpose we'll be taking a small prime number because it's really very tough to deal with a big prime number on paper. So for calculation purpose, we'll choose small prime numbers, but actually in terms of security, in terms of implementation, the prime numbers that is deployed are very big, 100, 200 digit prime numbers will be deployed, where it's really tough for a human being to solve on papers, but computers can do it. So actual security is relying on prime numbers P and Q, which are very large. Now the step number one in the algorithm is we have to choose two prime numbers, two distinct prime numbers where P and Q are not the same. Okay. So first you take two prime numbers, say P and Q. So in this lecture, I am not going to solve any example, just I am going to illustrate how this algorithm actually works. So let us say the prime number P equal to 11 and Q equal to 13. Okay. So we are taking two prime numbers, say P and Q and P is not equal to Q. Next step is we have to calculate n, which is a product of two prime numbers. So n is equal to 13 into 11, which is equal to 143. In this case, n is equal to 143. See, please follow my lecture. In the, in the upcoming lecture, I will solve you uh, an example for RSA algorithm. But here, I, my intention is not to solve any uh, problem with the RSA algorithm, just to understand, just to illustrate what this RSA algorithm. So after step number 1 is selecting two large prime numbers P and Q and step number 2 is calculating n where n is the product of these two prime numbers P and Q. Now step number 3 is calculating the Euler's tuition function. I hope you remember what is Euler's tuition function. If not, you can follow my YouTube channel where I have posted few videos about Euler's tuition function by your plan. If n is a prime number, in Euler's tuition function, if n is a prime number, the Euler's tuition function phi of n is equal to n minus 1. In this case, n is not a prime number. Why? Because n is a product of two prime numbers, say p and q. So phi of n cannot be written as n minus 1 because n is a product of two prime numbers, p, q. But I can write it as p minus 1 into q minus 1. So second step, after calculating n, the third step, we are calculating the Euler's tuition function phi of n is equal to p minus 1 into q minus 1. After that, we have to choose the public key. So the public key is selected. So the sender and the receiver whoever is processing this algorithm, he selects any number as E. Okay. So I will provide a shortcut. Actually the message has to be encrypted. So the mes message is normally, message is encrypted and the cipher text is decrypted. So cipher text is decrypted. Okay. So we have given a notation for understanding purpose. E is for encryption and D is for decryption, okay. So message M is using E and ciphertext is going to use D. It means E is the public key. As I already mentioned in a public key cryptography, uh, the encryption algorithm uses the public key for encryption, that is for message which is to be encrypted is using public key and the ciphertext which needs to be decrypted uses private key. So here E and D are the keys that we are going to use where E is the public key and D is the private key, see PU and PR, okay. So after selecting E, we have to calculate D, but it is not just like we can select any number as E. So there are uh, two restrictions applied on selection of E, okay. Then now, uh, say for example, I will take a small number P equal to 7 and Q equal to 5, okay. Now step number 1, P equal to 7, Q equal to 5. Step number 2 is calculating n which is equal to 7 into 5 which is equal to 35 and step number 3 pi of n is equal to p minus 1 that is 7 minus 1 into 5 minus 1 which is equal to 6 into 4 which is equal to 24. Okay. Now step number 4 is select 
selecting E. So selecting E and two conditions. The number what you are going to select for E must be less than y of n and greater than 1. So you just select. So it should be greater than 1 and less than 24. So the possible numbers are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up to 23. Okay, and another restriction is also there for the selection of E is that the number what you are going to select as E should be a relatively prime number to phi of n. So it means this number, the number what you are selecting as E and phi of n are relatively prime. If you want to know more about relatively prime numbers, you can watch my uh, channel. In, the, in that channel, I have posted a video on relatively prime numbers. In a nutshell, I just say that a number E is said to be a relatively prime number to pi of n if there are no divisors, common divisors except 1. It means, can I choose E equal to 2? No, I can't choose. Why? Because the number E and pi of n that is 24, 2 and 24 has common divisor 2 and not as 1. Okay, so uh, uh, E is not relatively prime to pi of n in this case. So, I can't choose 2. Can I choose 3? No. Why? Because the number 3 and 24 has common divisor as 3 and not as 1. Okay. So, what I mean to say here is the number whatever you are going to choose for E where E and phi of n can have only one common divisor and that common divisor is only 1. It means there are no other divisors that can divide both E and phi of n. Now, 3. No. 4. So, 4 and 24 can be divided by 2 as well as 4 as well as 1 but I have to get only 1 as the common divisor so I can't choose 4. In this case I can choose 5. Why? Because 5 and 24 if you say GCD of 5 and 24 what is the greatest common divisor that can divide both 5 and 24? It is only 1. Okay. So in this case you can choose 5, 6 you can choose, 7 you can choose, 8 you can choose, 9 you can choose. Why? Because you cannot choose 9 because 3 can divide both 9 and 24, 10, 2 can divide both 10 and 24, yes I can choose 11, so you can choose any number, the condition is it should be a relatively prime number to 5 of n, now for example you can choose either 5 or 7 or 11 or 23 or any number, ok, then after that, after selecting the number, you have to calculate the d value which is the private key, now very simple, whatever you choose as e and the inverse of that e is d, so the formula is d into e is 1 over 1 to 1 mod pi of n. Okay, it means whatever you are choosing as e, you have to multiply that number with its inverse. Okay, so d is equal to e inverse here. d is equal to e inverse. Okay, in this case. That is the multiplicative inverse I mean to say. So when you multiply the number and its inverse, you will get normally 1. Since we are performing under modular arithmetic, you have to perform d into e where d into e d into e when it is divided by this phi of n when it is divided by phi of n you should get 1 as the remainder ok please remember the number what you are going to choose uh, in this case you just see here uh, the phi of n value is 24 ok so it means the phi of n value here is 24 now already we have chosen let us say we have chosen e is equal to 5 ok so e is equal to 5 ok I have to get a number here so that my remainder is 1, okay. what number I can place in here? 5, right? 5 into 5 is what? 25, so 25 when it is divided by 24, 1 times and the remainder is 1. So in this case E and D are 5, okay. so here 5 is the multiplicative inverse of 5 mod 24. Okay. After calculating D and E, anyway we will solve the problem, at the time you will understand more about D and E. So the public keys are E and N, the private keys are, private key is actually D and N, okay, public key is E and N, private key is D and N. So remember, in a public key encryption or in public key cryptography, public keys are used for encryption. So encryption, you take a message M, normally that M should be less than N, okay. So remember, up to this step, you are focusing on the Euler's torsion function phi of N. Go. So for doing encryption, we need public key and for doing decryption, we need private key. So take a message, that message should be less than n, that means it should be less than this n and do m power e mod n, m power e mod n. For example, if the message is 10, 
okay here what we have calculated for so what you have chosen for e 5 so do it as n power 5 mod n what is the value of n in this example 35 so use modular exponentiation technique and solve this you will get the cipher text okay when you will get your plain text back when the cipher text say for example the cipher text is c so take the cipher text and power the cipher text with b the private key and do mod n you will get your plain text back after getting the cipher text c okay and you will get the original message as 10 okay because the plain text is 10 and your cipher text may be any number and you will get the same uh, plain text back when you decrypt the message with the private key okay. so this is how public key cryptography rsa algorithm works shortly we will see an example for rsa thank you for watching